Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question for you. This is related to the non-systems on the NPT. So as you know, on the exam, the non-systems, the, there's really an accumulation of five different non-system areas. This goes from equipment, devices, technologies, to therapeutic modalities, safety protection, professional responsibilities, and finally, research and evidence-based practice. So today we'll be doing a question from the therapeutic modalities. There will be somewhere between four and six questions related to modalities. This is one of those things where, I mean, there's, there's whole textbooks dedicated to modalities, and they are only going to ask you somewhere between four and six questions about it. So on the one hand, that's nice to know that, okay, that's not, not a million questions about this. But on the other hand, you still have to know about everything because they could pull those four from about any section of the book. And so today we'll be doing something related to cryotherapy. But before I get to that, just a quick reminder, head over to ptfinalexam.com where you can sign up for our latest courses. We've got a, a fun free promotion going on. If you go to ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, that's how you can get free access to our VIP program. So that's a thousand dollar value. You can get that totally for free. This is if you get yourself to Chicago for our free event on November 9th and 10th. Uh, be sure to check that out. You can find all of that information over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you'll be able to sign up and get that again, totally for free. And that's, that's my goal is to bring as much good content to you as possible. And the other thing I just wanted to say is thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. I know, again, it's, it's a ton of work to go through this exam. It is a lot of content. It's a lot of pain and frustration. Like just yesterday, I finished up with a university cohort that we work with and the students are testing next spring and there's a lot of, of anxiety about it. However, because they're preparing now, so about six months ahead of time, they're preparing now, having an adequate plan. And so while they're on clinical, they'll be able to at least squeeze in a little bit of our video content, maybe some quizzing here and there. In addition to podcast episodes like this, where we go over content, all that is super, super helpful to get you prepared for test day. And again, my goal, I expect all of you listening here today to get a 800 out of 800 on your NPTE. Now, what does that mean? Well, you only have to get about a 92% correct in order to get a perfect score on the exam. So just tell yourself, yeah, you're gonna get an A on this test, boom. You're gonna walk out those doors, head held high, and know that you did your very, very best. So. When you do get that perfect score or any score, passing, failing, whatever it is, just let me know. I'm always anxious to hear how you're doing and we're doing our very best over here to give you as much help as possible. So with that, let's dive into our practice question for today. As per our usual, I will read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we will talk about it together. Here we go. Which of the following applications of cryotherapy will be most effective at reducing spasticity and improving therapeutic interventions? So which of the following applications of cryotherapy will be most effective at reducing spasticity and improving therapeutic interventions? Number one, ice pack for 30 minutes before exercise. Two, ice massage for 15 minutes before exercise. Three, ice pack for 30 minutes after exercise. Or four, ice massage for 15 minutes after exercise. So kind of a mix and match style question. There's several things you have to mix and match. We have the ice pack the ice massage, the timing, and before or after exercise. So again, ice pack for 30 minutes before, ice massage for 15 minutes before, ice pack for 30 minutes after, or ice massage for 30 minutes or for 15 minutes after. So the core to this question is understanding that cryotherapy does indeed reduce spasticity. It's helpful at reducing deep tendon reflexes, as well as upper motor neuron spasticity and increased tone or hypertonia. The best application to improve your therapeutic intervention will be to apply that ice pack for 30 minutes before exercise. Now, that's kind of the sweet spot, somewhere between 10 and 30 minutes with an ice pack. And that, that can, obviously in this case, I'm talking about the actual ice and ice pack. You could also use gel packs, any, any other cooling modality, generally, well, I shouldn't say any other one, but most other cooling modalities as well. Uh, so your best bet is that 10 to 30 minutes before exercise, you'll find that that will improve your therapeutic interventions, uh, reduce spasticity, and make for a better, a better therapeutic exercise session. All things considered, the effects of cryotherapy typically last between one and two hours. 
So you do it for 30 minutes before you exercise and you'll find that they're, they're, uh, find that their participant, not just participation, but their spasticity is reduced to a point where they can more easily participate in stretching, more easily easily participate in exercise. It's just a, a good bet all around. Now, ice massage can have a similar effect, but typically ice massage is only applied for five to 10 minutes. And this is because ice massage is much more intense this is because you're placing the ice, usually a, a giant block of ice about this. Like when I was in clinic, we would always have a, a freezer full of paper cups full of ice. So basically a big ice cube. And we'd grab those big ice cubes, peel the paper off so that you had this giant ice cube. And then we would massage the skin with that ice. Now, typically that's only done between five and 10 minutes. The, the sweet spot seems to be between seven and eight you can get that intense cooling, but not so much that you cause harm to the patient. So five to 10 minutes is a good sweet spot. It's great for reducing localized pain, inflammation, or edema. It is very specific to the area, obviously, that you're applying the, the ice massage. So typically done on a small area. And the target treatment time there is between five and 10 minutes. Now, they, it can help reduce spasticity, but in this question, it's incorrect to do that for 15 minutes. That would be excessive in this case. So the ice massage for five to 10 minutes would have been more correct. And then before therapeutic intervention would be the target time to improve therapeutic interventions. There's also a lot of good evidence to support that you would provide your cryotherapy for like in the case of multiple sclerosis. So MS patients, these folks, they, they respond very well to cooler environments rather than to hotter environments. And so that's why in the case of multiple sclerosis, very often they're giving generalized cooling, like a cooling vest, uh, uh, sometimes cooling the hand, cooling the extremities. All these are ideal for someone with multiple sclerosis, but really any other upper motor neuron disorder, you'll find that ice and well, cryotherapy in general is going to be helpful. Now, the one I didn't mention here is vapo coolant spraying. So vapo coolant Vapor coolant sprays, what they do is they have a very localized effect. They're often used to, to numb the skin for injections. So super helpful for injections or IV placement. But it is also possible to use these for the spray and stretch type intervention where you're, you're targeting trigger points and trying to reduce any type of pain response that, that um, what do you want to say, the, the, I mean, it's a distraction, but the, the idea is that by applying the vapo coolant spray, you are reducing that pain withdrawal response to the stretching. And so you tend to have better, better relaxing of the muscles so you can have a better stretching. Now, it, it certainly would be helpful. Now, as far as the precise application of vapor coolant spray, usually uh, you do, what is it? You do several strokes. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to remember the precise number of strokes, but you usually do several strokes. Uh, you held about 12 to 18 inches away from the skin. You cool the skin, you do a little bit of stretch, you do it again, and you can get, all right, here we go. Two, between two and five parallel sprays is a good target. Two to five parallel sprays, about 15 inches away from the skin. And then you perform your intervention and then possibly repeat as necessary. But um, yeah, that, that's one of the other, other cryotherapy agents that can help with spasticity and stretching. In this particular, in this particular question that I asked you today, we're talking about ice packs versus ice massage. And again, the key here is that ice packs for 10 to 30 minutes is a sweet spot for reducing spasticity. Now, if you're just trying to reduce inflammation or edema, generally speaking, that's in place for 10 to 20 minutes. So not as lengthy of an intervention for, for pain and edema, but for, for spasticity, you'll have it a little bit longer between 10 and 30 minutes and then as I mentioned earlier as well, ice massage usually between five and 10 minutes. All right, so there you go. There's your practice question for today. So as I said, on test day, you can expect somewhere between four and six questions related to the therapeutic modalities. This definitely fits on that uh, in that category about cryotherapy. And I do feel like cryotherapy is one of those things that we do so frequently, but we forget that there are some pretty specific parameters that we need to follow for the patient safety and uh, in any case, it's just definitely on the list of things that are very likely to be asked on test day because they are common and can commonly cause injury to the patient. So with that in mind, you'll, you'll see that 
it is extremely likely you'll get something with either thermal or cryotherapy. For, so heating or cooling modalities extremely likely to show up on the exam. All right, so with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion here today. And if you haven't yet, just it only takes like one second. Go over to wherever you're, you're listening to this podcast. Leave us a five-star review. And really, you're just tapping that five stars. It helps so much in the algorithms as we're trying to get the word out about the NPT podcast. So uh, if you wouldn't mind doing that, uh, I'd really, really appreciate it. So with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. I hope you have a fabulous day, everyone. Take good care of yourselves. Keep a grin on your chin. We'll crane fist pumps all around, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.